Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it is uh, almost 6.30 in the morning on Monday. This is day 13 of our 30 day cleanse. And I'm gonna try that ginger water that I was kind of telling you guys about. I will link the video of Dr. Berg's below so you can kind of see how to make it. I'm doing everything the hard way, of course, but I've got some ginger that's been soaking in some water for about 30 minutes. And now it says to strain it afterwards because there's like little pieces of the skin that you don't get all off. I'm going <laughs> to, I don't have a cheesecloth. He recommended a cheesecloth. That smells really good. But I'm going to pour it in here to strain that off. And you can see it's still got like cloudiness in it. So part of the ginger benefits, I guess you could say. And then you're gonna juice an entire lemon. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there now before I pour it in my glass. And the benefits of this are really amazing. I wish I could remember everything that it said. That's why I wanna link it below for you. There's definitely a lot of lemon in here. So you have to enjoy lemon water, but I hear that lemon water while you're fasting is actually really good and can help prevent kidney stones and ginger helps with like your insulin stuff. <laughs> it's a, a technical scientific terms going on there. And then basically this is it. You're ready to drink it. I see a little bit of um, lemon crap in here. So I'm going to pull that out. My juicer likes to, there, I think we're good. For the most part, it doesn't bother me all that much. But here, I'm just gonna pour it in here. Hopefully this fits, I don't even know if it will. Oh, but I've even got a seed in there, so. There we go. Oh, perfect, geez. Well, look at that. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna drink this morning. It's also supposed to help you with your hunger. You will not be hungry, that's what it claims, and it's not gonna break your fast. So let's just see how strong it is. It's super strong, but it's good. Like I like it, it's kind of a different, something different to drink in the morning besides just plain old water. So yeah, that's what I'm having this morning. I'll probably be back when it's time for lunch. All right guys, welcome back. So we are ready for lunch today and I'm so excited about this lunch. If you follow me over on Instagram, you would have seen last night I posted this for dinner. Um, whenever I meal prep, and I did meal prep but I didn't film it yesterday because it was just pretty much identical to last week. But whenever I meal prep, I don't feel like eating or making a big dinner that night. So I actually, during my meal prep, I made some buns from the protein, sparing modified fast bread and um they're delicious actually so this was so satisfying because this bread really doesn't taste a whole lot like anything but when you just know that you're having a sandwich it's kind of it's kind of exciting right and this was so good and today it is not cutting for me it's a lot softer than it was yesterday but we're gonna make it happen but it was so good last night. So yeah, look, that's terrible, terrible job, but that's okay. But I'm using the chicken thighs that I had roasted and there was a little bit of this left. So we went ahead and um, we're eating it. Well, yesterday and today, I'm having it as my sandwich. Andy had some on the sandwich too. Um, he teased me and pretended that he ate all of it and I was really mad at him a few minutes ago. <laughs> so I'm like, that's what I'm feeling for lunch today. Now I don't know what to have. And of course, it was a joke. So yeah, so he got, he got a, the last laugh in there, but I'm going to put some salt and pepper on it. That was and just so good, I couldn't <laughs> He had his with the regular bread. I was so excited about the the rolls. They really turned out well. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. He had his hamburgers on it last night and he was just like, this is so delicious. It was like having a, well, it was a real burger, but you know what I mean? Um, then I've got 
a slice of tomato that I'm putting on it. Um, it's just so good. It's like having a deli sandwich, but not, you know, it's this bread that is like practically zero carb. I love raw red onion, so I'm gonna be putting some of that on it too. I still have a little bit from last night cut up, so we got that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I do have a little bit of lettuce. I'm usually not a big lettuce person on my sandwiches, but I'm stepping out of the box here, guys. Stepping out. And then last but not least, I'm gonna have a couple of pickles also. And that is gonna be my sandwich. And I'm probably gonna have some pork belly too. I did make some pork belly yesterday. After we went to Costco, I of course had to go and get that and look at that sandwich mm, doesn't that look good fine yeah i had i think i have more veggies on it than the chicken salad but that's okay everyone's different you put what you want how much you want on yours um but it's so good and it's so filling and you feel like you're just having something that you shouldn't have <laughs> but yeah look at that that is my lunch for today with some pork belly which is still in the fridge. But I'll get that out in a little bit. But yeah, that's what we're having. I'm still drinking my water. I've been doing really well with that. We've been having our, pretty much our daily amount. Um, since I did lose a little bit, I have cut it down a little bit to 50% of what my weight is as of last Wednesday. So it's like 88 ounces now. So yeah, I've been doing well with that. And that's about it right now. I'll probably come back when I make my iced coffee and say hi and talk to you for a few minutes. All right, so it is snack time and I'm gonna have an iced coffee. I'm gonna put it in this little Starbucks cup. And basically I'm using decaf. So I made a pot of decaf yesterday and I went ahead and just threw it in this mason jar because I can only do decaf, especially right now like I'll do my iced coffee with regular when I'm not doing the cleanse, but right now while we're doing this cleanse, I'm for sure only gonna do decaf. So in order to not waste too, I'm reusing, not reusing, but using um, what was in the coffee pot. So I'm using the nut pods. This is the hazelnut one. It's so good. It's unsweetened too. So you still have to add your sweetener. I've got the pure. And there you have it. My iced coffee. And I have no straw. So yeah, that's it. Not as white as with heavy cream, but it's still really delicious. And it is a good snack. I mean, Right now, sometimes the snack is just having something besides water to drink. But yeah, that is my afternoon snack. I'm gonna go back to work. It's a crazy work day today. Crazy work day. How's your work day going? Let me know down below. All right, so I'm hitting, sitting here real quick and I had to have a snack. And this is the pork belly. Guys, you're missing out if you have not seen the video where I make the pork belly. Um, I'll try to link that for you, but it is so delicious and it's zero carbs, zero carbs. And this is actually in the cookbook, the 30 day cleanse. She tells you how to make it. She recommends putting it on your salad for croutons and stuff, which I haven't done that yet. I can never make it that far because it's just that delicious. But yeah, that's what I'm snacking on right now. It's about 322. Hey guys, welcome back. It is dinner time here. I just got off of work and I'm starving. I'm ready for dinner and we are making one of the recipes from the 30 day ketogenic cleanse cookbook called Reuben pork chops. And I hear this is a very popular recipe. And if you've been watching for some time, you know that I love Reuben sandwiches. I've even done a meal prep um, where I did a Reuben sandwich casserole. It is breadless. And that's what I took for lunch for a whole week. And it is delicious. I will try to remember to link that for you, but it is so good. So I thought I would try this. Andy's not a big Reuben person, but 
all I got to do is not put sauerkraut on his and not put pickles in his Thousand Island dressing. So he he likes the pork chops. So um, first thing we're going to do is make the Thousand Island dressing. It is dairy free. Um, the only thing I don't have is fish sauce, but it says omit if vegetarian. I'm not vegetarian, but I'm going to pretend I am, which is really kind of funny because we're putting this on meat. <laughs> But anyways, so we need, let's see, let me get some mayonnaise. And you guys know we like mayonnaise because if you saw my grocery haul this past weekend, um, I bought a gallon jug of it. And I'm really kind of excited about it, honestly. But here, let me bring it down here because you don't want to watch me. You want to see the food. So here we are. Just trying to get the right amount of mayo. That's the bulk of this, which, again, I'm okay with. We've always liked mayo. I don't know. It's not like I can eat it by itself, but it's definitely one of our favorite condiments. Okay. Got the mayo. A quarter cup of tomato sauce, huh? Okay. I think most of my dishes are dirty, but here I've got another quarter cup one here. Oops, <laughs> that's a third of a cup. I won't pour all of this in. Okay, so there's that. And really from here, it's just some pickles, a little bit of salt, I'm just gonna do a little bit because, I don't know. And that's supposed to be Thousand Island dressing. Which honestly, I think I need a little bit more tomato sauce. You know what I will do though? I think I'll put some pickle juice in here because Andy does like pickle juice. And that'll still give it the flavor. I'm still chopping up some pickle juice in, or pickles in mine though. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick taste though, make sure it's got at least the idea Yeah, that's good. I could actually put a little more pickle juice in here. I think what it's missing for me is the pickles though, but we'll definitely have that in there. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, so now that we've got that, we're gonna set that to a side. Let me put everything, um, Kind of. I mean, this is such a quick and easy dinner, but let me put all this stuff away and then we will start searing the pork chops. Okay, we're back now and I've got my pork chops ready and we've got a cast iron skillet. It is warming up. Once it gets warm, it says to put a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil on the bottom. So we're going to do that while that is um melting we're gonna season our pork chops liberally it says not too liberally though you know so we'll do both sides here and like i said this is pretty simple all we're gonna do from here is um, just sear them on both sides and then we're gonna plate it all up I think I'll do another side salad on here like I like to do. And all right, here we go. Let me get a fork though. Okay. Let's see. Let's do this. It's 
this. Don't have overcrowd your pan either. So I'll just put two in here at a time. So yeah, these are gonna cook for about three and a half minutes on each side. And I did add the pickles to mine and took a taste and it's like, that's what it was missing. I will say though, out of everything I made in this cookbook, this is probably not like, oh my gosh, this is so good, the Thousand Island dressing. It's still really good, probably because it's dairy free, you know, it's not the same, but that's the first thing that I've just been like, um, oh, it'll do, <laughs> you know? But that's okay, this will still be delicious. I'm not worried about it, but I just wanna let you guys know, you know, the real thing. So I've got my sauerkraut also, um, it says you can put like a bed of cabbage underneath it, but no, I'm not going to do that. We'll just make a salad. But here, I'll show you what it looks like. Doesn't that look delicious? Yum. So, we'll see what mine looks like. Can I do it? Can I make it look that good? Let's hope so. All right, I will bring you back when it's ready. All right, we are back. The last one is still sizzling, so if you hear it, that is what's going on. But here is my Reuben pork chops. We've got the seared pork chops. We've got the sauerkraut on top of the pork chop and then the Thousand Island dressing. I've got a bite ready to go for me. And then I just did a side salad for us both. It's just got some red leaf lettuce, bacon, tomato, a little bit of onion, and then Andy had a great idea that we just used the rest of the Thousand Island dressing on our salad. So, he's brilliant. But yes, it looks very good. We're gonna take a taste right now. Oh, that bite needs, that's a big bite, hold on. I got a little bit of everything. The dressing, the sauerkraut, let's see. Mmm. Andy and I are both nodding. I was worried he wouldn't love it as much because he doesn't have all of the good stuff with it, you know? But he's really happy with it. Said it's seasoned very well. <laughs> but yes, that is delicious. I will definitely recommend that. Um, I honestly think you can make it with boneless also. If I did this again, I probably would because I don't know. Bone and pork chops just kind of, I don't know. It's easier to do boneless, I think. So that's probably what I would do. But oh my gosh, that is delicious. I would give that probably an 8 out of 10. What do you think, honey? Yeah, it's delicious. But like I said, the dressing is probably, it's good. But it's just out of everything else we've had in the cookbook, it's like everything has been so delicious. This was just really, really, really good. So yeah, I, I think I definitely would make it again, but this time, next time I would make it with the boneless pork chops and yeah, delicious. So I will probably be heading out after I eat to take a quick walk with Ralphie in the neighborhood and then I will show you what we're having for dessert if I feel it, but I think I'm going to want dessert. All right, we're outside now taking a walk. Ralphie and I are trying to every day take this walk that is probably about 10 minutes if you're going at a good pace <clears throat> and I know 10 minutes doesn't seem like a whole lot but if you could see how uphill this road is it really like by the time I'm done I'm extremely <laughs> winded and Ralphie is too Ralphie's like ready to be done by the time we we get back home so I mean, we're going uphill now, you can hear me. <laughs> and then over there, you're going up even more. So it's just a good, quick little walk to get us moving. 10 minutes, it's all it takes. All right, so now I'm gonna have dessert. We're just doing this little bit of the chocolate pudding here. The um, serving size is actually a quarter of a cup, but I think I've said this before that we don't need that much we just really need a little bit of a taste. So we're gonna be having just this little tiny cup. It's like two tablespoons worth of it. So about half of a serving. And that is dessert tonight, chocolate pudding. So this concludes my what I eat in a day on our 13th day as of filming. This is day 13 um, of our P 
ketogenic cleanse that we're doing. For those that you that don't know, don't know or are new, this is the cookbook that we're going off of. All dairy-free, no artificial sweeteners. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you have that notification bell on so you do not miss Thursday's What I Eat in a Day. That is our second week results and recap. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Are we having any challenges? That's when you'll find out. See you next time. Bye.